And he starts telling me that I'm going to do an additional two years in federal prison. And 10 months already felt like forever. I'd already had a really, really rough five days being in the jail within jail. And I didn't really know what the, the overall jail experience was going to be. And he's planted a shank on me and screaming at me about how I'm going to do an additional two years in prison for having this shank that he put on me. And I'm telling him it's not mine, it's not mine. And like 10 months felt like forever. Going from 10 months, I'm only five days in and already having a rough time. And I think I'm going to go from 10 months to two years in 10 months because either this guy planted a shank on me or it was already in the boots that I had just received from the laundry a few minutes ago anyhow. And I'm telling him it's not mine, it's not mine. I don't know where it came from. I don't know where it came from. And he's screaming at me about how I'm going to do an additional two years in prison. And of course, understandably, you know, I start to cry and the tears start running down my face because I think I'm going to be separated from my family for an additional two years on top of the 10 months that I'd already barely come to grips with that I was going to have to do. And when he sees that enough tears are coming down my face and that I'm crying enough, he pats me on the shoulder, goes, relax, I'm just kidding with you, have a seat. And so that man just purely tortured me for his own amusement. And the guard, the other guard sat there and watched the whole thing. And I don't know exactly what went through the head of the other guard, but uh, at that time I got assigned to a, to a bunk in a big giant warehouse size room with, I don't know, a couple hundred other people in there that's so loud from all the, it's like tile floor and concrete walls and the sound really echoes around in there. And it's like really, really difficult to sleep. And uh, you know, of course no privacy there at all either. Um, so they assigned me to the bunk there and I, you know, didn't hear anything more, uh, at that time. But then maybe after I'd only been in the jail, maybe three weeks or so, um, they called me back to the counselor's office and, uh, it was at this time, it was just the one guard that had watched the other guard torture me and bring me to tears thinking that I'm going to do an additional two years in prison because he planted a shank on me. Um, and it was just, you know, purely did that for his own amusement. But the other guard was there and he told me, you have a new bunk assignment. Um, and, you know, I'm still pretty new to the whole place. I don't know what that means. But uh, he assigned me to, uh, there's a lot of jokes in prison, but uh, they, they call it the private suite. Um, it's not really a private suite and it's not nearly as nice as it sounds, but that's, everybody has to be an optimist in prison. So there's all sorts of things that, uh, People are optimistic about it in prison and there's like lists that go around the prison of uh, things to be optimistic about in prison. Like the top, top, I think it was a top 100 list of things that, the good things about being in prison. And some of them, you know, if you can have a good attitude are, are kind of funny. So like an example of some of these things on the list about the, the best things about being in prison is you don't have to worry about what you're gonna cook for dinner. You don't have to worry about what you're gonna eat for dinner, right? Cause you're, you're told when you're gonna eat and what you're gonna eat. You don't have any choice in it. Uh, you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry about what bills to pay or any bills to pay. Uh, you don't have to worry about what to buy people for Christmas. Uh, you don't have to worry about all sorts of things, which, uh, if you can have a good sense of humor, it's it's kind of funny. Um, so I guess people need to be optimistic or, or have a bright attitude when they're in such a bad place uh, where the food is so horrible and uh, everything is not uh, not so good to put it mildly. But uh, anyhow. I got assigned to this other room that instead of having a couple hundred people in there and it's so loud, you have to wear earplugs all the time. I was assigned uh, to a room that only had uh, four bunk beds and uh, only eight people in it, which was a million times better than the great big giant room that I had been in. But it caused other problems because other people thought, wait a minute, Roger's only been here for a couple of weeks. How did he get assigned to that bunk? Whereas usually you have to be there for years before you get assigned to such a good bunk assignment. And so some people were worried, you know, is it because I'm, you know, a rat or an arc or something like that? Or, you know, what, what did I do to, to get that? And I don't know. Um, but what my suspicion is, you know, here more than 15 years later, I suspect that the one guard watched the other guard torture me and bring me to tears over lying to me, thinking that I'm going to get an additional two years in prison. I think the one guard that watched all that happen, I, I think he felt a little bit bad for me. And I think he assigned me to that bunk just because he felt bad because the other guard had tortured me, but he didn't say, or, and I didn't ask, and you're not really in a position to ask anybody about anything. 
Um, and uh, I guess a lot of people also have this misconception that uh, well, aren't you scared of, of the other prisoners in prison? You know, don't, didn't you have to worry about it? And like, maybe some people you know, have to watch out for a little bit, but you know, 98%, 99% of what you have to worry about in prison aren't other, it's not other prisoners, it's the guards. Uh, Cause the guards are there day after day after day, year after year after year. And a lot of them are really, really bored. Some of them maybe were nice people um, to begin with, maybe some of them still are nice people, but others are there just because uh, they like treating people badly. And uh, it's the guards that you have to be worried about in, in prison. It's not so much the other prisoners. And there's guards that uh, their entire day is spent harassing the prisoners that are there and giving them a hard time about all sorts of different things. And uh, maybe I'll tell some more stories about that sort of thing in the future, but uh, I guess I'm glad I made the, the one video talking about how a guard literally planted a shank on me and lied to me, claimed that I was gonna get two years additional prison time. And they can lie, but the guards can lie about whatever they want for whatever reason they want, and nobody's gonna believe the prisoners. People will believe the guards. But uh, I was there firsthand, I saw it, this is the truth. Uh, I guess I should tell another story. So while I was there, uh, there were two times that uh, the federal inspectors came to inspect the federal prison to make sure that the prisoners were being treated properly. And on those two days, those were the two days that had uh, by far, not just a little bit, by far, Far, by far, by far, by far, the best food in the uh, in the entire time I was there in the in the chow hall there, like way better food than normal. And uh, in the bathrooms there, there's like you know soap dispensers and paper towel dispensers. That the entire time I was there, never once did they have any soap or paper towels in them, except for the day that the federal prison uh, uh, inspectors came. Uh, on that particular day, wow, there was actually soap in the soap dispensers. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And there were paper towels in the paper towel dispensers. That was amazing as well. Um, and the other side of it, two people don't realize, like, you can't tell that, hey, you, like, you can't tell the federal prison inspectors, hey, they're just putting on a show for you. The prison's never like this normally. Uh, because if you complain about anything, uh, the guards will really let you have it. They'll send you to solitary confinement. They'll send you to the jail. Within the jail, they'll give you another thing. There's another thing called diesel therapy. You're probably thinking, what the heck is diesel therapy? What diesel therapy is, is where they ship you from prison to prison to prison to prison on a bus. And you ride on this bus across, they zigzag you across the country and you're handcuffed and chained to a seat on a bus. And you live on this bus for days or weeks or even months on end as they ship you around the country because they don't like whatever you complained about or whatever it is that you caused trouble for them. And they, you literally live on a bus for weeks or even months on end, and that's diesel therapy. And if you complain, they'll do that sort of thing to you. So you can't really complain about anything. You can't tell anybody about anything because they'll make your life even worse. Um, so anyhow, that's uh, part of my prison torture story of having been tortured in prison. And uh, I'm sure Ross Ulbricht has had some bad experience with some guards. And uh, I think Gary Davis, uh, this Irish guy, and is also gonna have some, some bad experience with guards. But uh, part of why I wanted to tell this, and I, I don't know if the world uh, knew this or not, we weren't super public about it, but uh, we had hired Gary to help with our customer support and forum stuff and you know dealing with customers at Bitcoin.com. And uh, he's been working with us at Bitcoin.com for quite a while now, maybe a year or two, maybe even more. Um, I'd have to check exactly when he started, but he's been a fantastic, uh, team member and a fantastic friend and just an all around great guy. And now he's looking at life in prison in the United States, a country he's never been to, never had anything to do with, uh, for simply m helping moderate a forum on the internet uh, that maybe talked about things that the US thinks is illegal, but it's a forum, a discussion forum where people talked about things. Uh, so anyhow, I just wanted to display my uh, absolute, complete and utter disgust with the federal American federal injustice system. And you know what? Maybe the federal injustice system of the United States is better than some other countries, but uh, they're all pretty damn bad in my book. So, uh, and I'm not interested in participating about it. And uh, 
I'll have part two of this video. I'll, I'll tell you guys uh, in part two about why I'm just so fed up with uh, the United States police in general and why I think the police uh, in just about every country in the United States specifically are much worse than your normal common criminal. And I uh, look forward to part two. Maybe I'll make that video this afternoon or another day very soon. So uh, if you like this content, uh, post it on your own sh social media, share it with a friend, subscribe to the channel, spread the word because uh, that's all we can do. Uh, the government people have all the guns and, and the power for now, but uh, that's changing. Um, but that's all we can do. So keep spreading the truth. Thank you guys for listening. I, I hope you found it interesting and uh, tell a friend. Thank you.